So there's a video trend going around on YouTube where creators are talking about how YouTube changed their life with less than 500 subscribers. And after seeing the exposure some of these creators were getting, I was like, should I make this video? But after skimming a few of them, I realized they're leaning more towards the how to YouTube niche, which is not me at all. I do think the topic is really catchy, so I was thinking how can I tweak this to try and make it my own, which is why I'm going with lessons I've learned from YouTube that changed my life, or rather how they've helped me grow as a person, which is more in line with my channel. I am wrapping up my second month of posting long form videos on YouTube, so I thought this was a good point to try and do kind of like a reflection sort of thing. Just a side note, I'm not annoyed at the video trend itself, but am I the only one that's annoyed that everyone's recreating this video and like just copying the title verbatim and not even trying to like change it up a little bit? I'm all for SEO, but literally if you type in the search bar like how YouTube changed my life, like five of the results will be verbatim of the original, like down to the parentheses. I don't know, maybe it's just me. While I've only been posting on my channel for two months, long form wise, I have been managing my husband's channel for the past two and a half years. And I did actually spend the majority of last year posting shorts on my channel. I managed to learn so much from helping out my husband, but I will say there are some lessons that just don't hit until you experience it yourself. Basically, I just wanna be transparent about how long I've actually been dealing with YouTube because I feel like somebody is gonna complain. Someone always has something to complain about these days which actually leads me to my first lesson. Lesson one, everyone is a critic. YouTube and social media in general has taught me that someone is always gonna have something to say, no matter what you say or do on the internet. Basically just because it's the internet. No matter how much you research, no matter how much you prepare, the chance of someone disagreeing with you is pretty high. Sometimes it's literally just for the sake of disagreeing. It doesn't even matter what it's about. You're just never gonna make everyone happy. It could be something actually important and controversial. It could be something super silly like cake versus ice cream. Like you're just not gonna make everybody happy and that's okay. The important thing to remember is that people that are doing better than you, people who are successful and happy, they're not the ones that are gonna be bringing you down. They're not gonna be the ones complaining. They're not gonna be the ones that are leaving nasty comments. They're not gonna be the ones bringing others down. Obviously, this doesn't mean absolutely everybody is gonna be you know, out there to criticize you, out there to disagree with you, because there are people out there that are truly supportive. The next lesson I wanna talk about is fear only exists because you don't know what to expect. So I kind of touched base on this in my first video, well, what I consider my first real video, um, that it took me a long time to post on YouTube because I was scared. Part of that fear was fear of the unknown. Even though I had been filming, editing, posting videos for my husband, I hadn't done a long form video for myself. Again, I don't count the very first video I have. So I didn't have a reference point of kind of what to expect. Your brain doesn't like the unknown because it can't protect you from the unknown. It doesn't know what it's supposed to protect you from or how. You don't have that reference point for your brain, but that's why it's so important that when you're scared to do something because it's something you've never done before, you really need to take control and lead with your head, not your emotions which I realize is kind of weird to say because I just said it's your brain trying to protect you. Anyways, the point is you need to take charge, you need to go through with it, whatever it is that you're scared of doing and just accept the fact that it's probably gonna be sloppy. For me, it was hitting the record button on the camera, it was going through all the footage, editing it, and posting the video for the world to see. Only for me to realize that it really wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. But because I went through the actions of posting the first video, I finally had a reference point. I realized it wasn't so scary. It was just gonna take practice, practice, practice. Which mind you, I knew all these things beforehand, but again, some lessons don't really hit you until you're experiencing it yourself. The next thing YouTube taught me was how to get over my fear of public speaking and honestly probably even some of my stage fright. Growing up, I had awful stage fright. 
which was really kind of weird to me because I loved performing. I performed for about 10 years or so, starting in third grade. I was doing tap dance, ballet. I started chorus in middle school and I was doing color guard. Now, my stage fright actually had to do with speaking in front of people, public speaking. So in that regard, chorus is a little weird. Here's my reasoning why chorus was actually okay for me. As long as I wasn't doing a solo where my voice could be identified, I was okay. I felt safe singing in a big group because you're not gonna be able to pick out my voice. And even then, I would argue that logic is a little flawed because I was a first soprano. Now for non-musical people, first soprano is the highest pitched voice you hear, the really high notes. So in songs we sang in high school and stuff, there would be songs where it required the first sopranos to go really high. And even from an audience standpoint, you could kind of pinpoint where the high voices were coming from, like which part of the group. So let me tell you how bad my stage fright was. In high school, when I was in chorus, my teacher would have us do sing-offs as our exam. You basically sing your part of a song, whether it's alone or in a group, but you're the only person singing your part. I would go through with it solely because it was for a grade, but my stage fright was so bad that I would be shaking uncontrollably I would cry afterwards, like I wouldn't even be able to hold it back. I, it was just like, it was just all pent up. And then as soon as the sing off was done, my body was just like crying uncontrollably. And I would basically black out, not pass out. I just literally would not remember like the previous five minutes because my body was just in shock. There was one time I had a friend who was saying a different part as me. We were in a group together. I had to ask to hold her hand. And afterwards she said, oh my God, you were squeezing my hand so hard and I could feel you shake. Now, looking back, I am very happy that I took chorus, that my teacher made us do stuff like that because even from my freshman year to my senior year in high school, I did get better. The crying did chill out towards the end. But now that I'm older and like capable of reflecting more, I realized that the fear back then stemmed highly from insecurities. But at the same time, now I'm like, ha, look at me. I'm talking to a camera and posting it on the internet for the world to see. If only my teacher could see me now. Just kidding, we're not telling him that I'm posting on YouTube. I do equate talking to the camera as if I'm talking to an audience because the first time I went to hit record, my mind instantly created this picture of me being on stage, the, the lights, I'm looking out and I just see a huge audience. And the first video was hard. I recorded it, edited, and then I asked my husband to look at it and kind of give me feedback. And it was feedback I needed, but I didn't take it well. And then I got all these insecurities bubbling up again. And that's why it took me a whole year to post. No, oh my God, was it two years? And that's why it took me over a year to finally post anything. I don't really know when it happened, but at some point when I started talking on Instagram stories and posting consistently on Instagram, I just one day realized like, wow, this doesn't feel weird. This doesn't feel as scary as it used to. Now, I know I still have a long ways to go. I do recognize that I have issues articulating my thoughts, which is something I know I need to work on. But I will say I'm, I think I would rate myself at like a 90% in terms of the comfort I feel with speaking in front of the camera, which also in my mind is equated to speaking in front of an audience. Growth is growth and I'm gonna take it. All right, lesson four. This next lesson is the importance of having a creative outlet, learning new skills and finding new hobbies. Learning how to edit and color grade, coming up with shot ideas have all been very interesting and exciting for me. I never actually considered myself to be super creative. My sister was actually the more creative one between the two of us growing up. But in creating videos for my husband and now myself, I feel like I've really been tapping into my creativity and pulling from my experience as a resident advisor from when I was in college because 
that job actually required a lot of creativity, surprisingly, from coming up with program ideas, from coming up with cute little name tags for my residents to have on their doors, to coming up with bulletin board ideas. Looking back, I didn't expect there to be a creative aspect to the job, but I did actually have a lot of fun coming up with stuff and creating videos has kind of felt like an extension of that. But during the process of teaching myself how to color grade, how to use editing software, how to come up with ideas for shots and transitions and stuff like that, it's also shown me the importance of stimulating your mind, keeping it on its toes in a sense, because your brain is a muscle just like any other muscle in your body. And basically, if you don't use it, you will lose it. There was a period of time before me and Nico started getting into YouTube where I felt dull. I didn't feel like I was getting dumb, but I felt like I wasn't as sharp as I used to be. And I would say that's because I wasn't stimulating my brain. I wasn't actively trying to learn anything new. I wasn't using it in the same way that I was back in school. And yeah, I felt dull. It really felt like because I wasn't using it at the same capacity where I was constantly learning something, like it was losing its capabilities. And I know this sounds, that probably sounds really weird, but I've noticed a difference since I started, you know, reading up on YouTube, SEO, algorithm, and how to edit and shots. Like when I started learning how to do all these new skills for YouTube and for social media, my mind just felt different. It felt like I woke up, like it was finally being used again. I don't wanna go back to how it used to feel. <laughs> I don't wanna feel like my brain is dull again. So it's really shown me the importance of like constantly actively trying to learn new things, finding new topics to read, to read about and learn about. Look for new hobbies, look for new interests that you can take on and make sure you're using your mind. So this last lesson I feel like is a little bit more personal for my channel, my niche, um, but I feel like it's still a relevant lesson that like anyone can kind of take on. It's learning to recognize that the most triggered person is probably the person that needs to hear your message the most. You could probably argue that this lesson is more of an extension of the first one where everyone's gonna be a critic, everyone's gonna have an opinion, something to say, but I have come to find that the nastiest people, whoop, the nastiest people that have left comments for me on YouTube are the ones that are taking things out of context and some of their comments really make me go where the hell did you get that from? Because that has nothing to do with my video, short or long form. But they're the ones I've realized are the ones that need to hear the message the most. Unfortunately, they are also probably in a position where they are least likely to listen to your message. They're not ready to hear it. Hence the negativity and the verbal attacks. I will say that I have chosen to engage with a few of these people and they actually resulted in very productive conversations. Usually it ended up being a misunderstanding on their part. We have a little discussion and I've managed to change their minds. But the truth is most people aren't gonna be like that. Most of the people that are coming to attack you, it's because they're triggered in some way. You know, you've unlocked an insecurity or they feel targeted by whatever message you're putting out and they have things that they need to work on, things that they need to face inside of themselves. But I've learned that the only thing I can actually do is to ignore the negativity, ignore the mean comments, and just keep doing what I'm doing. Keep making content, fine tune everything, practice, 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 and hope that when I'm actually better, they will also finally be at a point in their life where they're ready to hear the message and apply it, learn from it, and grow. But it all comes back to them. And are they willing to listen? Are they willing to do the work to better themselves? Because what it comes down to is you can't help somebody who's dedicated to misunderstanding you.